This is Steve with Collider, and um, we're here in our South by Southwest studio for Three Body Problem, which is a fantastic new Netflix series that's going to become your next favorite sci-fi thing. Um, but let's talk about the most important thing. You were literally just in Vienna. <laughs> yeah. Please grab a mic and let's talk. Yeah, I was in Vienna two days ago. What are you doing in Vienna? I'm doing a movie with a Guy Ritchie called Fountain of Youth. I've heard of this Guy Ritchie movie, yeah. or I've heard of Guy Ritchie. I yeah. think I you even worked with him recently on something called Ministry of... Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yeah, yeah right. And hypothetically, um, you might kill a lot of Nazis in that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when I say hypothetically. A, a lot, I mean maybe like 3,000 yeah. or four. But I'll see you then to talk about Right, that totally. I'm just sure. messing around, but like, anyway. <laughs> so listen, I really, getting into, uh, getting to talk to the Oxford Five, um, you guys did such a great job in this. And one of the th reasons why I think the show is so good is that all of you have um, like great characters that you understand and understand their motivations and you you know what I mean you really get to know them in this spectacle of a show so what was it like for each of you um, you know like reading the scripts and seeing that this is not just spectacle that there's a deeper layer to it yeah this I mean that was the, the first impression reading the scripts was uh, was how fully developed uh, the characters were and and how interesting their journeys are and their relation the strength of of the dynamics and their relationships um, and uh, it, I mean it's a real treat to read characters like that in in a show of this sort of scope um, and is pretty irresistible from an actor's point of view thank you uh, yeah I think I think uh, I think we'll what, what the principle that D David and Dan have brought over from Game of Thrones is the idea that that you can have big existential threats, but they don't really matter unless you care about the people that they're affecting. Mm -hmm. Like, like s spectacle is one thing, but unless unless you have a group of characters who you can relate to and you can you can kind of live that threat vicariously through those characters and think, what would I do as as a normal person in extraordinary circumstances? I think that's kind of what it's about. I, 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 I think because our show is based in the real world, it starts in the real world and then things start to get crazier and crazier. It, it forces people to to think how they'd react in those circumstances. And it's, it, it goes fantastical, but it's firmly rooted in reality. I don't know if, any of you, if you, anyone else wants to say anything. Yeah, I think that ultimately adapting is such a complex story. This is a very, very complicated story, to be really fair. If people are familiar with the books, you know, the books are not just a obvious sci-fi or in, in rooted in science, obviously more towards geared towards science, but it's a political drama. It addresses historic, important moments in history that kind of rippled effect in what we're living in the current times. There's so many foils to the story. So, I mean, they are, it's really hard to satisfy everyone, right? You want to put the right things in the right amount, but ultimately this is just the beginning, hopefully. And it's, you, the, those books are so larger than life and they go so many ways. So I do think that they firmly focus right now into giving people personalities and emotions. And if we didn't do that, we couldn't go a billion years ahead of time or wherever the books go because we're just like, well, why would I care if, so you want to experience, so what they do is experience these characters as you, like they want you to experience it as a personal journey as an audience member, like you're Jess, you're, you know, or Will or Jen, you're, you're them. And so you are in a, in a sense, we're like, your VR version of what you would do throughout that journey. And so yes. that's exciting that we were able to sort of lay the, the groundwork on the first season and hopefully can, if you know people watch it, we can go so many places, but it was ultimately the most important thing, I think. The first season is eight episodes. For each of you, which is your favorite of the eight episodes and why? I would have to say the first episode. Just because that's when you meet the Oxford Five, I think one of the one of my favorite scenes to uh, to shoot was our first day, which I believe was the pub scene, mm -hmm. um, and that was like our first time getting to all play together, and you get to really experience how each actor works and brings their own talent to the table. So it was really um, an important scene, and it's one of my favorite, or one of the most memorable, memorable, excuse me, out of all of the uh, all the scenes that we've shot. You know, it's so hard to choose a favorite episode because there's so much that I love about each of them, but um, one that really sticks out to me is um, episode five, yeah, right? Five. It feels like a blockbuster film, like smack bang in the middle of this philosophical sci-fi. It's absolutely epic. And I hope that everybody makes it there because um, what happens is 
beyond your imagination and so tragic and harrowing um, and absolutely epic. I think I think for me personally, um, episode three is 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 kind of in 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 some ways sort of sort of the the boldest and most intricate really because that's the episode where we really make use of this VR world that we create within the show and the and the genius thing about that is that because of that device we're not bound by any of the logic that any other show is bound by we can show our characters in any point in history any point in the future have them we can basically show whatever we want to yeah. we're only limited by David and Dan and Alex's imaginations and I think that that's the episode where we really take the best advantage of this device which is so unique to our show and kind of kicks the doors off its hinges and just lets our lets us run wild I think also I really like the last episodes for you too. That's one of my favorite like story plot journey. I really like both Will's and Saul's story, and I think that they really get to thrive in those in those episodes. And it's very emotional, very profound, very deep. But at the same time, we get to be well, we don't, but they get to be in amazing locations. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they were able to shoot in the UN. I mean, that's pretty spectacular. And then we have all the Cape Canaveral stuff and it, it just the show. That's what I love about the show. You think you're watching a show and then like another episode com comes and you're like, wait, this is not. And then it keeps you on your toes. And I think people, especially the audiences, are going to enjoy sort of the constant change in, in storyline and sort of uh, you never really know what you're going to get with the show. I, yeah, I'm not sure I could pick one, um, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I I think there's a, I could give really good reasons why each one is is my favorite. Have another half hour, then we can. <laughs> Listen, I, honest to God, I could I, I wish I could talk spoilers and really get yeah, into it because okay. I I have so many things to talk about. But uh, before I run out of time with you, and I have more questions about the show, we're doing a supercut with everyone who comes in. We have so many people coming in, and for my supercut, I'm asking everybody if you could only watch one TV show for the rest of your life, what TV show would you watch and why? Family Guy. <laughs> I rewatched a lot of Family Guy just because I feel like in work I do a lot of drama, so I really like to enjoy comedies. So Family Guy is something that I watch like all the time. Rewatch episodes, that or The Office. It's definitely a favorite. Uh, for me, I think it'd be The Joy of Painting. Sure. <laughs> imagine that on a loop. I imagine, imagine what a lovely person you'd be if that was the only show you ever watched. <laughs> You're not wrong, honestly. Mine would be the great, the great British Bake Off, for sure. I could watch the Bake Off forever, at any moment in time, and makes me so happy. I love baking, and British people baking, specifically. <laughs> it's like so sweet. <laughs> They're so sweet. They're all so sweet people. Thank you, Razor. Yeah. <laughs> What's um, your... Oh, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Sopranos. Sure. Uh, or Breaking Bad, or... Herb. You can't list five things. That's oh. cheating. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. one thing. He said two. Yes, <laughs> one. All right. Um, I, uh, Sopranos. Good choice. Nice. Yep. I think I'll have to go for Naruto because there are so many hundreds of episodes, so hopefully I won't get too bored oh. going back and watching them again. Yeah. Tactical I like it. Yeah, logic. Well, I mean, Family Guy's also like that. There's like 20-something yeah. 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 seasons. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, exactly. So jumping it back into your show, uh, let's talk about your bedroom. I don't want to spoil anything. Not oh. <laughs> Right. Yeah, in the show. Yeah, in the show. Yeah, sorry. I, was, I, I butchered the way I introduced it, but you have a, uh, I don't want to spoil anything a little bit, but you have an interesting collection of things. How much were you like at the end of the shoot? Were you like, can I, I'm just taking this stuff home. Uh, no, I, I, there was something about that, that house, which I found very moving, actually. The whole, the whole house and, and his, and his bedroom, it really gave me a sort of key into that character, really. Somebody that, that, that had those interests probably as a kid, didn't have a lot of money growing up, and now he's made himself a fortune and he's able to spend his money on all the cool stuff he's ever wanted. So it very much felt like... Jack's thing. If if I'd have taken it, it felt like I was stealing from him. But 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 yeah, there was some. There's something really heartwarming about. And then of course, the thing about Jack is that he's got all of this stuff. But we find out later on that the things that mean the most to him are the things that he's his friends. Yeah, it's us. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> but, but other than that, I was thinking that he's 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 kept things from when he was a child. Yeah. Yeah. And and. I, 
I, I think that that's, that's quite a sort of like a, it's a little analogy for what it means to be alive, really, that, 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 that you go through life, but the things that you try to keep closest to you, the things that mean the most to you are the things that you discover early on and they stay with you your entire life. Yeah, and that set, the, the set actually did a lot of uh, a lot of the work for us in, a, in the scene where we return there later yeah. as well. Well, that's one of the reasons, getting back to what I said at the beginning, it's, it's the fact that you care so much about the characters, and I think the audience can relate to at least one of you, you know what I mean, and the way the dynamic is, which is what's going to pull people in. Um, I also w want to touch on the fact that, like, I watch a lot of television for work, and there is nothing like this show on TV. And the other thing about it is it takes, and I don't want to spoil anything, there's a lot of twists and turns that you will not see coming, and even... Like, there's just a lot. So I guess t touch a little bit about that, that, um, you know, that it's unlike anything on TV and you really won't see what's coming. Who wants to start? <laughs> I think that's a, that's a testament to the writing. And it was David, Dan, and Alex came in with a lot of passion about this project. They had this material for many years and they were doing their absolute best to create characters that, like you said before, people care about. And I think that the more that they care about those characters, the more they're invested in these twists and turns that you're, that you're referencing. Yeah, like we've mentioned, um, the show is genre bending, so there is uh, a smorgasbord of, of everything you could possibly want. Um, you've got action, you've got epic spectacle, you've got the nuanced um, scenes. And the source material itself, uh, anyone who's read it knows that it's so vast and it's so like, uh, you could kind of drown in it. Um, but what David, Dan and Alex have done is they've kind of concentrated all of that powerful storytelling into um, one explosive arc and the core of that is I believe the Oxford Five and Benny Wong's character Dasha who really lead the audience through their their shoes um, as they go on this wild ride um, and hopefully everyone the audience can hold on for dear life. Yeah there's a lot to set up you know the books are really vast as she said a lot to set up so it's challenging as a creative and as a as a book anyone as a writer as a creative for the cast for the crew there's a lot being asked from just by the nature of the books so i think they do a spectacular job at that because you also don't want to you don't want to speed up the story you don't want to move forward too quickly but you also need to set so many things at once so it's a very complicated like you know we have to give them the credit it's a very complicated thing to set in eight episodes and i think they do an incredible job at balancing all those things and introducing a lot of information because we also kind of want to get all the information of where we're coming from and where we're going because the books move pretty quickly as this has been set up and the, the future and the possibilities are endless but i definitely think that it is a complicated thing to adapt like ultimately one of the hardest things i've ever seen to be able to adapt and what i really want to highlight that i loved about what they did is you already had all these complicated subject matters, you know, again, we're addressing so many different political agendas, da, 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 da. But you also have this book that has been written in Chinese with Chinese people in China. And the thing is, we're addressing a worldwide crisis, right? Earth is in crisis. So I think that what they did beautifully was keeping obviously the Chinese components of it because you know that is where the book comes from and the history of China is radically important into this story but I'd also added the layer of what is another two different layers and that is two different genders you know because in the books are heavily heavily masculine and also secondly people from different cultures like the way that I react being a woman from Mexico is not the same as a man from England with the background that we have and so that adds like a, a, a character trait more more layers to ethically what you would do what you would decide how pragmatic you are there's so many things that come with that and I think again the room for expansion is endless from there I have so many other questions, but I have to wrap with you guys, which sucks because <laughs> I would really like to go further. Listen, for everyone watching, you're going to love this show. It's going to be your next obsession. Thank you all so much for coming in, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.